We're going to create an application today that streams audio off the web in iOS using Core Audio. I've gone ahead and I've created a, uh, a small starter project for us to work within here today, which just has a single screen and you know a single controller that's backing it in an audio view controller. Um, since we're doing an audio application, just to keep things simple, we're not going to have any user interface. We're just going to write the audio code and let everything run when, um, when this controller loads up. And its view loads up. So, but just to make sure everything is running okay, um, and our code is running, I'm just going to set the view's background color to white, as I hit, did here in the view did load method. And then we'll run to my device that I have, uh, my iOS device that I have connected, which I have a little program that echoes it out to the screen. I'm gonna run here. You can see my device and give it a second here, and it'll launch the application. And we should see a white screen, and then we'll know that everything is connected and, and we're ready to go. All right, so that looks okay. That's what I wanted. So what we're going to do is when this application launch, launches, we want it to start playing the music off the web or start playing audio off the web. So let's get started and do that. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to need a, a few class variables here that we're going to work with. Just bring those in over here. And the two important things are this audio file stream and this output queue. The audio file stream, that's where that's what that's going to take care of parsing and decoding the audio stream that's coming off the, the web. And the output queue, the audio queue, is going to be the um, place where it actually plays the audio. So those are the two, two, important, um, two important classes that we're going to be working with here today. I've hard-coded up above here a, a URL that I'm going to be using. It's actually um, off of a, a nice channel I like to use, listen to myself. It's called Ver Vermont Public Radio's Classical Music Stream. If you like classical music, I encourage folks to check it out. But we're just going to you know, make, to, for simplicity, we're just going to use that one endpoint. And we're going to get the, the live web audio off of, off of there. So starting down here within the view did load, first thing we're going to need to do is gonna, we're going to need to create our audio file stream. So let's do that. So we just create a new audio file stream. I'm going to make an assumption here for simplicity that it's an MP3. If you're building, you know, say a, a web audio player that was you know, more general, there's ways that you can you can get information um, at, at at the point of when it's connected from the audio stream itself of the type of uh, the type of audio that you're dealing with, right? You, you, in this case, though, just going to simplify it and just deal with MP3 because we know that that's what it is. And then we're going to handle on the audio file stream two important events: this property found in packet decoded. So what property found is going to do, that's where we're going to actually get from the audio endpoint various metadata um, about it, you know, such as if the thing I just discussed, if we wanted to handle, you know, the type of um, the, the, the type of encoding we have, like MP3 or something else. In this case, we won't need that. Or more importantly, the thing we'll see is we need to implement when the actual audio is ready to receive packets. And then the other uh, event that will actually receive the packets will be this packet decoded. And that's where we'll actually do most of our work to, um, to set things up to play the audio in the audio queue, right, by enqueuing it. So before I can do all that, though, what I need to do is I actually have to write some, some code, some networking code, to actually get the, the, the web audio, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm, you can use your, um, your favorite kind of HTTP mechanism to do it. I'm just going to use the newer iOS way to do it, um, which is NSURL session. So I've got this little method here called get audio. And what that's going to do is that's going to use NSURL session to just you know, get the audio from that particular URL that we coded up above. And then we can call that, if we have that there, right down below here, get audio in the view did load, excuse me, in the view did load method. All right? So now, um, when the audio is ready, when, when, when the data has actually come off the web, this is how you can download information on iOS. Um, NSURL session works with a, a delegate class. So it's called NSURL session data delegate in this case, the one we're using. So what we'll do in there is that will tell us, hey, we've got data now. You know, you've got data from, this, from, from the web, from this endpoint. So let's do something with it. And what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to use the audio file stream that we created up above to, to parse and decode the data. And that's what parse bytes does. It, it takes this data that's coming off the web, this, this audio data, and it parses it and it decodes it. Okay. So once we have that, the, the, this decoded data will now start going into the two event handlers that we need to implement for, the, for packets being decoded and properties being found. Right. So let's put those in place. Right. On property found, what that's doing is this is the biz this is the place where we're going to handle the what the metadata, right? The information about the particular 
um, audio that's coming off the web. The thing you absolutely have to implement in here is ready to produce or handle rather is ready to produce packets. You see, we get a bunch of properties that come down from the audio file stream available in a nice, um, you know, nice and discoverable. And when you're doing it in C sharp through the through IntelliSense. And what we can handle is, you can see there's a variety of different things here. This is where you can, you can look, look at, you could even look at, say, something like the file format, see if it's MP3 or something else. In this case, we didn't need to because I'm just making that assumption, as I mentioned. And then importantly, I need to handle ready to produce packets, right? By listening for ready to produce packets, I know, hey, this is where I'm about to produce packets. And what I can do is I can, at that point, it makes sense to create my audio. That's when I know, hey, I'm about to create, produce packets. Let's create my audio queue where I can actually buffer up the data and then start the audio queue to play it, right? We'll do that in the other event handler, the actual, you know, in buffering and putting and queuing the audio data and subsequently starting the audio queue to play it in on packet decoded, as you can see here. That will be called when we actually have data that's coming back, you know, after the, um, after the ready to produce packets has been handled. So now at this point, we can handle, um, at this point, we could actually, we'll actually get the audio data and we could create a buffer, add that buffer to the audio queue, and then start the audio queue. Once we start the audio queue, then the audio will begin to play. The last thing we're gonna need to do though, is so that we don't leak, we'll need to free that buffer when it's completed. So we can do that in the output completed event that we handle on the audio queue itself. Right? And then we simply just call free buffer to free that uh, that buffer. Right? Releases the audio cue buffer. So once we have all that in place, right? Just simply handling these these couple events and you know doing a little bit of HTTP code, we should be able to start this guy up. If all works well after the application launches. Our audio begins to play. So that's a that's a short, small application, as you can see, with just a, a very small amount of code. You can implement um, web-based audio streaming in iOS, and you can do it all from Visual Studio with a, a, a nice API on top of Core Audio that we've bound and made available to C Sharp. Thank you.